Welcome back to another episode of the Working Audio Tools. We did, we debated doing a Christmas special, but just thought, nah, we'll wish you happy Christmas at the end of the episode. But we are going to do another mix episode this week, and this mix comes from Wilf Raby. Now, Wilf Raby's uncle is his manager, and he is a friend of mine. Um, this is how I have this connection, and Wilf has a new album coming out next year with some very lovely, lyrically driven songs that you'll hear in a moment. This song is called Listen To Me. Let's have a listen to a rough mix of what we were sent, and then we'll check out Paul on my own mixes. Come listen to me, please. I've got more secrets than I can keep. And dreams slide away from all that I can see. Believe is keeping me together, but my knees are weak, and all that I could ever do is breathe in and breathe out. How about your lessons in compassion? I'm rational enough to know that all that I have said could be misread, and then. Have to stay awake until the sun rise And I wish that you were mine You're the only thing worth knowing But you just keep on glowing And the heart aches Could never be replaced By a tall can of lager So, Paul, how did you approach this song uh, from a mixed point of view? Right, so this week I have tried to take on board what we have kind of been told in you know our most recent interviews. So when we had uh, Turo Medina on, he was talking all about you know less is more. And then last night um, when we had Prezi on, he was talking about the less is more approach and just think about the song. So this is, I, always, I think I, I I get more like this every episode I do when I say, this is the least processing I've ever done. But it is, this is genuinely the least processing I've ever done. In the pre, yeah, same. Yeah, in the pre-mix stage, um, I actually did a lot on the, um, the in-ears that I use um, for pre-mixing on the laptop. And I basically just used stock EQ. Um, I still, I'm particular with my compressors, as the way it is, because I see them as tone boxes. So certain things stayed the same, but I this is the first mix I actually learned to leave things alone, which is normally hard for me because I normally kind of tweak everything slightly. Uh, but I left things alone, which is is actually quite difficult <laughs> when you're you know I think in the modern day mixes um, or mix, modern day mix engineers we do tend to tweak stuff and we're like, oh, I've got a plug-in for this and a trick for that. I struggled with that as well, and I was thinking, right, how is Paul going to throw his creative juices over this one? And I know, I know you'll have come up with some incredible ways that I'll be thinking, oh my God, that was so obvious. Why didn't I think of that? That happens every week. Um, but the challenge for me on this track was there's not actually much space to do much because the vocals are so constantly flowing through the song. There's really never more than a beat gap at any point in the song when the vocals are in. So in terms of delays, I was like, well, there's probably four places I can bring up one beat or two beats of delay, which I did in the choruses, and the rest of it, I just keep it out the way. Um, went for some tasteful effects. Uh, I tried your multiple reverb thing. Used the new um, FabFilter R2 for a very, very felt more than heard, thickening reverb, and then a slightly longer one, so I don't think I went for three. But I found the production interesting on this one. So I've worked with Wilf before in this studio, and he's got an interesting guitar technique where, and I was speaking to Grant, his uncle, about this. He's, he picks with um, his finger and thumb, I think, and then he kind of flicks the strings with his other fingers. And he's, he's a big lad. He's like six foot, um, six foot something. Right. And he's got big hands. So how he mic'd it, we ascertained, was from either side. And I was listening to each mic thinking, is this two mics combined into one mono file and it's phasing? Or is it that the angle of which 
the microphone is hitting the acoustic, the sound is phasing because he's hitting one the top strings with his thumb at one end, and then his because his fingers are so long, it's enough distance to phase. So I ended, I tried using both uh, stereo that were left and right acoustic parts, and I ended up binning one and just using one. Uh, and panning it left slightly. Um, and then also with the pianos. Now, Trinov drove me crazy on this episode, on this mix, because I was hearing a phase issue in the piano. So I split the left and right and used Melder M Auto Align and figured out that they were 1.6 milliseconds out of phase. Oh, right, okay. So I messaged Grant saying, how did you record the piano? You know, thinking if you've only got 1.6 milliseconds of phase on a live piano recording, you've absolutely nailed hmm. it. But he said, oh, no, it was samples. I was like, oh. and we were so confused. Like, how are samples possibly out of phase? I've never come across that before. I, I could be wrong, but I was hearing something with Trinov and I investigated it and it came out at 1.6. The other thing was, production-wise, it, the song moves and stuff comes in and out, but there's also quite a lot of repetitive stuff in it, like the acoustic guitars are quite repetitive. The piano only really does two things. The backing vocals are, are the most agree, kind of yeah. creative things coming in and out. And for me, actually, the bass gives it a lift in the chorus. So it was kind of how can you make this song move and keep and flow? But then it's, it's quite a nice short song, and I think it's so vocal-led yeah, it musically. I just didn't think it needed that much. It was just focus on the vocals because he's a great lyricist and the song will sell itself. So I was the same as you. I was like, absolutely less is more on mm. this. I think the effect side of it was pretty hard for me, but I, from the... the not, not being able to do them. <laughs> yeah, I know, because I think from the interviews that we've had, especially Prizzy's one uh, last night... That's a great yeah, episode. It's not, it won't, it's not out yet, and it won't be out till a little while yet, but, you know, as a kind of spoiler alert, he was talking about how... It was a great saying, what he says, as a mix engineer, you have millimetres of space to work with, because if you work with good tracking engineers, good producers then the, the 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 mix is all kind of ready in a place where it is just you taking it and enhancing it and fixing any issues. So you shouldn't need to do much. And we were talking about has there been times that you have, you know, um, added in kind of certain effects and kind of been a bit creative. And you know, he said, yes, yeah, a few times, but a lot of the times you will just be t- told to remove them. So I was, I was like, right, okay, maybe just not, yeah. so maybe just try and back off a little bit and serve the song because many people have said that some of the stuff I do can sometimes act as a distraction and it doesn't help the song. But I think I agree with you. I didn't really feel that I could do much with it. There were certain times where it was like, mm, should I maybe do a bit of uh, auto pan to move something like the shakers or the tambourine? But I just kind of used more reverb and delay on this and trying to have the right balance where... Now, the annoying thing is I've not listened to the mix through these and real phones so I won't know how the speaker translation is yet but I've still tried to keep the reverb and delay a little bit back more felt rather than heard I'm still trying to push that and have things less heard and more felt this is me again trying to get feel trying to get the drums more into the mix while still having the instruments there uh, I agree with you production wise it was a little bit difficult because it was such a sparse mix you've got to have them in the mix but still not too much to kind of let everything work together. I think the rhythm section works quite well. The acoustic guitar at the start, I kind of struggled with, and I did. I actually did quite a bit of processing. You know what? What we'll do is we'll just listen um, to the mix. We'll do my mix first, um, just so you can get a bit of a context, and then we'll speak about it. We'll go to it. Tell you what, though, just before we play that, credit to Grant for delivering what was a beautiful session to receive. Everything was clearly labelled, clearly numbered, uh, everything started from zero and compared to some of the stuff I've been working on recently, <laughs> uh, I was very, very grateful. So thank you, Grant, for being such a pro at that. Right. As Paul said, this is Paul's mix of Wilf Raby's Listen to Me. And while I remember, Wilf Raby has a new album coming out early next year. Listen to me, please I've got more secrets than I can keep And dreams slide away from all that I can see Believe is keeping me together But my knees are weak 
And all that I could ever do was breathe in and breathe out How about your lessons in compassion? I'm rational enough to know That all that I have said could be misread And then I'll have to stay awake until the sunrise And I wish that you were mine You're the only thing worth knowing But you just keep on glowing And the heart aches Could never be replaced By a tall can of lager And a night full of laughter To find I'm pulled beneath the sea And as I look around I see my seams Afraid I always misbehave And in my dreams movie screams But all that I could ever do Is breathe in and breathe out How about your lessons in compassion I'm rushing That all that I have said could be misread And then I'll have to stay awake until the sunrise And I wish that you were mine You're the only thing worth knowing But you just keep on glowing And the heart aches could never be replaced By a tall catalogue and a night The Working Audio Tools podcast is brought to you in association with our friends at DistroKid for all of your musical distribution needs. Don't forget, you can't just upload your songs to Amazon, Spotify, iTunes or Tidal. You have to go through a music distribution service. There are many out there, but DistroKid is the one that Paul and myself use. They don't take any of your royalties. You keep 100% of the streaming revenue that you earn. For just $1.92 a month or $22.99, a year, you can upload unlimited songs. Your lyrics can be found in Google and other places. You get the blue Spotify verified checkmark and you can create royalty splits between yourselves and fellow contributors. You also get access to the new DistroKid iPhone app for editing and uploading songs and accessing your statistics on the move. There are plenty of other tools available on DistroKid. We'll go through those in another section. That was Paul's mix of Wilf Raby's Listen To Me. Okay, immediately, I prefer what you've done with the acoustic guitar. Right, okay. Putting that down the middle at the start was probably the best idea. Did you use both acoustic parts? Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think, because <laughs> I did the premix first. I think I comped them to a stereo track, and then I may have used um, auto stereo fix, so the left and right were balanced. Was there two acoustic parts at the at the start? Yeah, yeah, they were. I think they were recorded to be panned hard left and right, which is basically how I could, that was the best position for them to minimise any any phase, uh, which is why I ended up ditching one because I actually didn't want them panned right. far left for reasons you'll hear in my mix. 
Yeah, so I mean it's a good mix all round, I think. Okay. I think we've had a a similar approach in terms of less is more. Now I said this last time and listened about two days later and then deleted that <laughs> bit out of the podcast because I disagreed with myself when I said that we had a similar sounding mix. Yeah. But I'm not gonna say we've got a similar sounding mix, but I think we've yeah, I don't know, I feel like we've both had a similar approach in that we've tried to choose things and to prioritize in the mix and where to put things further back to create depth mm-hmm. that was something i tried to focus on the drums are good i'd say it's uh it's a good whoop, whoop. good drum mix <laughs> for you um nice and forward in the mix now i would actually maybe say loud in the mix rather than forward okay. but i like the loud toms yeah. that you've got panned nice and wide the cymbals were bright and clear and cutting through which i liked again i felt the snare slightly competes with the vocals okay but I hear what you've done this time. You've brought the fundamental down from about 3K to about 1K, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, I think so, yeah. But that's where he's quite prominent with his voice. Actually, no, no, so no, I tell a lie. Um, see, what I did on this one was I got the fundamental of the snare, which I don't know, I want to say 170 or somewhere around there. I might be wrong from the top of my head. But I've basically just kind of added in a bit of bottom um and then i think i just did a bit of a top end shelf which i ended up then having to like take down <laughs> when i was doing in the mix session because i think i had it too bright um but no I, maybe that's where i went wrong maybe i maybe should have went into the snare and found where the the main part of his vocal was and then you know maybe just took that out of the snare so it wasn't it wasn't fighting um but what i'm about to try in the next mix i was Again, me being me, always searching for stuff. In the Lair uh, by Dave Pensado, and he was using uh, Dine One by Leapwing, and he was showing it on drum bus. And what made absolute sense to me was he was working with it in midside. And what he did was he compressed the drums more in the mid channel in that kind of region where the vocal would sit. And then he ah. kind of was like not compressing as much in the sides. So you were getting that nice bit of width from the drums, but the mid channel was just like a little bit more tucked for the vocal to sit in. So I'm going to try that. But I do know that Leapwing take a lot of CPU, but I'm going to try that right. out because I think I, when I heard Dave doing it, and I think that might help me with a snare because if I do it on drum bus, then obviously the snare is going to be like kind of the most kind of transient part of that. And if I kind of tuck the the mid range out of yeah. that then it might, it I might mean, work that, my, my reaction to that is that that's an unnecessarily complicated way of just getting the snare out of the vocal right. frequency range okay he's just treating it like like a wideband compression but he's just taking a little bit more out of that kind of yeah. maybe one or two yeah, K it's, range. A, it's an interesting yeah. concept mm-hmm. it's it's one I'll look into because I'm definitely not going to question Dave Pensado's <laughs> techniques Um, I've been watching quite a bit of Pensado's place absolute Oh, he's gold, man. The guy's gold, man. And uh, ho- hopefully our podcast will be where their <laughs> their video, their show is in their, you know, when we're their age. I wanted a little bit more of the strings, but I, I understand why you decide that they were kind of a background yeah. instrument. Mm-hmm. Oh, by the way, I meant to say, it's not that your snare was wrong. I didn't think that at all. I think on its own, it's like it slightly shines a bit too much right, okay. <laughs> in the track. Yeah. So you've almost done a too good a job <laughs> of making it sound good. That it, again, it's just slightly detracting. Yeah, I get what you mean. I kept my I get what you mean. mind quite out of the way again. Um, so, what was your approach to the bass? Because off air, you said that you were happy with how you'd nailed that, and you you felt like you'd got your approach right for mixing. Well, that. I'll ask you first. Do you think that I've got a decent bass sound for this track? I'll be honest. I couldn't hear it enough. Right. Okay. Um, so uh, now I, I, it sounds like you've gone for the full spike stunt approach with a very conservative. Now that's unfair because d- that depends on the genre. And again, <laughs> I'm not questioning uh, our Lord and here Saviour <laughs> spike stunt. Um, but uh, I'm thinking in terms of like uh, you know the Keen mixes he did and Ed Sheeran's mixes. They're so piano guitar, acoustic guitar led that the bass is a bit of a kind of background instrument mm. i dare say that's how it sounds in in this mix um right so it makes sense because i was listening i was directly referencing a spike stent mix when i did this um which it one was a member of the band called the feeling yeah it was a i know their drummer yeah. so it was a song called Sone. Paul Stewart, um yeah. i love Sone. I, like, I love that song 
Um, and it was one of the spike mixes that I remember I used to listen to in my car. And it was, and it was funny because I remember going, oh, I really like this mix. And then I was like, I wonder if Spike Stent did it because he did a lot of UK bands and it ended up being Spike that did it. And I love the Keen records as well. I'm a big Keen fan and I love the sound of the mixes as well. So I, I don't know. I thought Sone kind of worked a little bit for it. So I was listening to how he had his bass. Again, how he had his snare um, in his low end. Um, now, again, it doesn't sound like Spike because I'm not Spike Stent, but it helped me kind of get in the ballpark because it had a little bit of a tilt. Then I went to Ozone and then I did the the cardinal sin of then playing about and experimenting, kind of lost my way, but then I was able to come back. Now, for the bass, I felt the bass was too boomy when I was mixing it and I was struggling with the, the level of the bass. And I think, I remember Streaky said that about one of them, I think it was the the Sydney mix that we did. It was like, your bass low end maybe just needed tamed a little bit. Um, so I was thinking about, right, it's not frequency that I'm struggling with because I haven't done much to it. I've maybe just given it a bit around 200 um, then a bit of maybe around 1.5k maybe yeah. so I've kept it simple I've high passed it a little bit to get the way out the kick I haven't went crazy with it but what you what you're probably hearing is probably level because I, I was struggling after I'd done this one trick I, I do need to point out that this is also in contrast to how loud I have the bass in my right, mix okay. so you'll 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 hear and again I think the bass may be a case of somewhere between the two of us is probably right, right. Okay. now what Maybe it is a level thing because I, I, I didn't. I've not given myself enough time to reflect on this. I would like another day to come back. What I've done is I've taken the sustain a lot out the bass because that's what I was finding was causing so much boominess, and it's something yeah, that okay. Emra taught me because Emra's got um, a plugin called Kick Shaper that I use on kicks. Uh, yeah, I think I played around with that on this. Yeah, mix, so yeah. I, I used it, and he said to me, "Use it on bass as well, but just use the D boom. So take all the other stuff off yeah. and just use the D boom. Yeah. So you're shortening yeah. the length of the bass. And see when you understand that the sustain of the bass is what causes the boominess a lot of the time. Yeah. All of a sudden you go, ah, that is how they get this really tight bass pocket. The bass that just kind of does that instead of whoom, whoom, it's whoom, whoom, whoom. so it's possibly either because I've been experimenting with this for the first time. I've maybe put took too much sustain out the bass, or it's maybe I've got the right amount of sustain in the bass, but I've not given it enough level because I was listening to spikes and I was listening to mine. Yeah, I, th- I think it's that way around because right. I feel like there's not quite the the girth and the foundation. Right with it because you you're a little conservative on the kick drum in in relation to the snare and the toms. So without the bass it's just a slightly conservative in the low. Yeah, and I think for yeah, me cuz I had the kick louder but I was listening to spikes and I was like mm, the the kick like my kick was quite loud and it was prominent and it was too prominent and I could uh, but then I heard it. So I I was a little bit conservative with the low end and then I realized right okay the bass needs to fill up more of that. And obviously by changing the sustain and like lessening the the length of the bass it brought it down in level and then it was a case of riding it so that's why I, I, I said probably I would need another day to go back because I've genuinely just like this the mix you heard there was genuinely finally the final tweak about half an hour ago um, so I would like another day to go back to Paul, Paul Third yeah, classic no, I'd like another day to go back <laughs> to it but um, I a part of me was saying no let's get it on the podcast because then Ed could give me a fresh perspective and then if it's just level then that's the thing that I want to hear because then that means I'm not I've not got the boominess which can ruin a mix and if it's just a fader ride that's generally a 10 second fix so I'm happy yeah, I'm happy with yeah. that I'm happy that you feel that the drums are better and it's amazing because it's generally as simple as not just not doing much I think when you start going OTT with EQ and you start messing with the drums things start sounding processed and when you understand the sound of a processed mix I'm like ah right okay let's be a little bit more conservative and that's why a lot of these mixers you'll notice that they will just have a channel strip like EQ and a bit of compression might have a bit of com- parallel compression off the, the, the drum bus and stuff but yeah you don't need to do too much with drums and I'm learning that yeah just be conservative um, and if it's a really shit kit then that's when you probably will need samples but I didn't feel like I needed I think I had one kick sample um, but yeah I'm happy with that because okay. it, it sounds like you've listened to the mix and 
nothing has overly poked itself out of you where you were like, that's ruining it. It's just kind of little. Mate, it's, it, it's, 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 it's a very releasable, acceptable, perfectly good mix. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm just nitpicking the shit out of it because that's what we're yeah, here good. for. <laughs> I, know, I know what, I'm happy um, with that. I'm really happy with that. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I, I would be as well. Um, the the drums, interestingly, were uh, all electronic kit samples. Ah, were they? Well, sorry, electronic kit recorded and then sampled, I believe, using Slate. Ah, right, okay. Something, I can't remember what Grant said. I think the main difference between what you and I have done is we've just prioritised the placement of different things in different places. Mm. But we've tried to go for a similar approach, I think. All right, without further ado, let's put on my mix, which I haven't heard for a couple of weeks, and compare. Let's do it. Come listen to me, please. I've got more secrets than I can keep. And dreams slide away from all that I can see Believe is keeping me together But my knees are weak And all that I could ever do is breathe in And breathe out How about your lessons in compassion I'm rational enough to know that all that I have said could be misread And then I'll have to stay awake until the sun rise And I wish that you were mine You're the only thing worth knowing But you just keep on glowing And the heart aches could never be replaced By a tall can of lager and a night full of laughter Come listen to me, please I awake to find I'm pulled beneath the sea And as I look around I see my seams Afraid I always misbehave And in my dreams Movie screams But all that I could ever do Is breathe in And breathe out How about Your lessons in compassion I'm rational enough To know That all that I have said Could be misread And then I'll have to stay awake until the sun rise And I wish that you were mine You're the only thing worth knowing But you just keep on glowing And the heart aches Could never be replaced By a tall can of lager And a night full of love The Working Audio Tools podcast is brought to you in association with our friends at DistroKid for all of your musical distribution needs. For a little bit more, $39.99 a month, you can have two artists on your roster, which includes everything just mentioned. Additionally, synced lyrics in Apple Music, further streaming analytics statistics, 
You can create a customizable record name. Mine, for example, is Ed Thorne Rhythm and Records. And you can customize release dates, pre-order dates, iTunes pricing, and again, much more. Now, if you're an artist manager or a record label, the Ultimate Bundle gives you up to 100 artists for just $89.99 a year. And you get one terabyte of instant file sharing, which is useful, but also contact information for thousands of playlist curators on Spotify. This is really useful so you can pitch your artist music to playlist curators around the world, only available in the Ultimate Bundle from DistroKid. There is Ed's mix. Now, I would have to agree that there's been certain elements of the mix that I think we have done similar, and I can tell that there has been a less is more approach, especially on the piano. Our piano sounds are actually quite similar. I think I've maybe compressed my piano a little bit more. than. Did you compress the piano? I can't remember, but I don't think so. Right. I, I feel it could do with a little bit of compression, because there's certain bits where I think it pokes out a little bit, and I it could kind of sit in the track a little bit more, but I think tonally it's like practically like the same. Yeah, I could hear what you mean with the low end because I quickly referenced my mix uh, just quickly. Yeah, I just think my mix just needs a bit more low end. I think you've probably got the right level of low end in my opinion. And I think, yeah, I just need a little bit. I like the tightness that I've done by using Kick Shaper. I feel that you're, if you if you you uh, did a bit of Kick Shaper or a Transient Shaper, and took a bit of the sustain out of that bass, the bass mm. would have a really nice pocket because I think you've got the level right. So yeah, I would definitely go back and... I I mean, I don't know. I think like a dB and a half on mine maybe because um, with bass, I mean, you don't need a lot for it to automatically be like too much. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So maybe on re- reference, your bass level I think is right, but I think I've got the right sustain. So again, a blend of the two would I think would be perfect. Um, as, yeah. always. <laughs> as always. As always. <laughs> Vocal sound, I think, again, we're very close vocal sound-wise now. I don't really think there is a thing now where it's like, it's like a, oh yeah, Paul third vocal sound. I think me and you are very similar and get basically there's the exact same quality of vocal sound. I think they're very, very, very similar. Um, they won't be identical, but I don't listen to yours and think mm, it could do with any adjustments. I think it, it works very yeah, well. Yeah, I, th- I think I've cracked the code for consistent consistently good sounding vocals now i think still learning where i need to tweak ceilings of sound which is my go-to to start mm-hmm. mal on at white noise studios nailed it in his video on that he just said this will get you to a good starting point and then go from there to suit the track and the singer which is what i did i played a lot around with the marg eq4 on this one actually because i was quite inspired by the Poltec trick and how obviously uh you've got phase shifting going on um, with the Pultec units, and I thought, I wonder what phase shifting might be going on with the Margs as well. So I played around with that and found I wanted some weight and added actually added 40 hertz on the Marg. Now, they're quite wide curves. It's not necessarily something that's heard, but again, felt, I thought, which I think... Actually, I f- feel like you maybe had a bit more low end on your vocals than mine. And I could have could have put more. No, it's in, funny. Well, mine is a mind is the most easiest thing ever. I just go into ceilings of sound. I so I DS ceilings of sound DS. Um, I print that, and then I duplicate it twice. So I've got three. One goes into a stay level DSer, then ceilings of sound. So it goes stay level, and then. Oh, uh, you actually print that three times. You don't just send it to no. different parallel sends. No, I print it three times. So basically the compressors are receiving like the optimized, like well-balanced vocal to my ears. So it goes, you know, so I've sorted out the DS and balanced it. And then obviously doing it the way I do it in Ceilings of Sound, I do it a very specific way. Um, yeah, I do as well. As well, You can't just do it as no, you it comes can't. out of the box. You can't. I've got a very, <laughs> very specific for... technique. <laughs> and then, so every compressor is getting the exact same vocal that's been balanced and DS'd. Three lots of compression, three different tracks. I pick which one sounds the best, so which compressor wins, and then the other two, left and right, and just push them up, and you get that fullness that the parallel level compression oh, gives yeah. you. It's, yeah, it's dev- Like hard left and right, yeah, you're yeah, panning yeah. them, or hard like 20% left and, left, and right. left and right? Um, and what I like to do is, so seeing the, the verse on mine, um, and the sort of the intro, I didn't have the parallels in, and I brought it in for when the rest of the instrument, instrumentation comes in, 
So it feels a little bit smaller yeah. and then it kind of comes out. I thought you'd done something to, to bring it up in the chorus. And that's that's definitely a spike thing of uh, from what I've heard of him from the the, the University of London interview you sent, mm. which ironically has shockingly bad audio all the way through, <laughs> I know. which is a live sound engineer who used to do conferences and stuff I like know. that. It annoyed the <laughs> shit out of me. Uh, maybe there's a job there for me. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's something spikes all over uh, bringing in parallels and stuff like that. And yeah, I, actually, I feel like your chorus lifted quite nicely. I, I think I had some parallels going on. I think I had a parallel keys bus, parallel drum saturation that I had in anyway, but brought in, but yeah, I've, I've, and then backing vocals. But yeah, I felt like you did a nice job on that, elevating the And chorus. then in regards to your drums, I actually felt that the snare could maybe use a little bit more top end to me. Um, uh, balance wise I think the kick mm, I, I think the kick's just maybe a little bit too crunchy I don't know if you've maybe pushed into the limiter a bit too hard or I don't know I just felt that see I went for a bit of a softer kick sound because I felt it was a soft song originally I didn't I not I did like the, the clipped and saturated thing and used the, kind of normally use the split EQ thing so you've got this like but I just kind of felt that the song was soft so I went for a softer kick but level wise, I thought it was right. That, that's interesting because I think we've gone for d- different ways of softening it. Right. So uh, I know what you mean about it, it is a soft song, which is why I think I backed off the top end on the cymbals yeah, yeah. compared to yours. But I still wanted it to drive. And I figured, right, well, if I haven't got the tight bass sound, then it needs the kick to drive mm. it. So I, that's, that's, that was a conscious choice to have that. Yeah, I had that same thing. It's like, do I need it to be this prominent? Yeah. I certainly wouldn't add more click to yeah, it. Yeah, I agree. But it, I wanted a presence there just to keep it moving. Yeah, snare sound, you yeah, were saying? Yeah, I think um, right level. I just think that I maybe could have maybe needed a bit, just a bit more snap to it. Maybe just a bit more top end, I think. I just think it sounds, it's not dull. I think it's it's just a little bit dark. And I get that obviously, that's maybe a thing you've went with the track because it is a very mellow track and as you said you don't want to go too bright and that was something that I was trying to balance was not it not sounding too dull and still having a little bit of life in it so my symbols are a little bit bright but I used that as a way to add a little bit of brightness to it but yeah I, I mean I'm, I don't know maybe like a DB maybe like a bit of a, a 10k shelf maybe a DB on the snare maybe yeah maybe I, th- I was thinking there's quite a bit going on in the upper mid range with the acoustics and the piano and that was another thing that was slightly tricky with the production was the backing vocals, the acoustics and the piano were all in the same register pretty yeah, much yeah. all the way through the song, which to get some separation was tricky. Hence, the acoustic is panned left slightly, even though that's a stereo track with the reverbs, it's panned left. The stereo track is image left and then the piano is a slightly right all the way through to create that separation. And then the backing vocals are wider and distanced as much as I could. So that was how I tried to get the separation. Um, yeah, so s- snare-wise, I was like, well, that can go here below the vocals and below all the other stuff. What I did notice when I listened to mine and yours, I went a lot for um, the shakers, and especially that tambourine, and I added a lot of verb to it to give it this kind of depth and a little bit of separation. I felt that um, I couldn't really hear um, the tambourine in there. It was very much kick, snare, kick, snare. Did you, did you not bury the tambourine but um, because the shakers I think are at the same level um, as me and you have done that the same but I think the tambourine I don't know for whatever reason I felt that it kind of gave it this nice bit of feel and motion and if you added a bit of reverb to it it just kind of did that so level wise did you kind of have it set a little bit back in the mix a little bit but actually I need to have another listen to it now you've said that because I I think you might be right but what also may have caused that is there were places where the tambourine was was it late or early on the snare drum? It was out of time in, in in places, so I moved it in time. So maybe because it is with the snare drum, it's actually less old. No, what, that, I would say that's what it is. Because I actually liked the fact that it just kind of was a bit offset because it just gave it a little bit of extra dimension and a little bit of extra feel. Because I liked the fact that I was able to hear it and it was just like this. And when I added, I, I wasn't sure about it. Then when I added verb to it, I added like a, a long verb and it just kind of does this. That's all I could describe. That's what I had in my head. Was it doing that? Um, that was it. For those for those listening and not watching, <laughs> Paul is gesticulating as if you he was catching a or star. Actually, no, what I'll actually say, what I, 
what it looks like is if I was a pickpocket and I was trying to steal something off the top shelf. <laughs> That's what it looks like. <laughs> Seeing a bag of Harry Bow when I'm like an eight year old and I'm having that. Right, job done. <laughs> Fucking Oliver Twist up in <laughs> Scotland. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it may be that that tambourine timing was intentional because everything else is so well mm. played and in timed. And I know the acoustic guitars were looped, but everything else is very, very well played and produced. Um, so yeah, maybe that was intentional and I've actually overlooked that. My drummer OCD may have got the better of me. So I'll have to go go back and check that. Again, another thing I'd say about this mix that Grant did really well, well, Grant and Wilf, obviously, but I say Grant because I know he's producing Wilf, uh, is that he, the guitar sounds really didn't need much doing to them because he'd purposely recorded them with depth in mind. Like the lead guitar that's got quite a bit of reverb on it quite distanced already so he'd almost done the hard work and the choice making for us what quite i found good. interesting was that on the 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 high plucked guitar the other one's like dim 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 yeah um, i added a bit of spring reverb to it and i had it panned nice. um like remember the trick we talked about i think in the last one that we did um i had it like about panned about 30 and then i had left and then i had the delay panned yeah wide side. right and I, and yeah, I felt yeah, yeah. that I was able to kind of give me that depth. And I think me and you both sat it back. So we made the exact same decision with that. Because the the, the problem yeah. I had with it is that say if it's too loud in the mix, it really, it's a bit great. And now I fucking, I low passed it quite a lot because I thought it was just a bit too shiny, a bit too distracting. Oh, I think I was up to three or 400 on that one. Yeah. yeah. No, but I mean, I low passed Pretty it. I took up. a lot, of, I mean, I high oh, passed right, it and sorry. low passed it, but I took quite a lot of um, high end off it. Because obviously when you take more kind of um, high end out of it I'll sit more on the track I used stage one on it as well and um, yeah, with the so. depth I used, actually added like a bit of a low end kind of tilt in it um, just to kind of darken it up but sit it back the only thing I was not sure about was the intro guitar or the verse acoustic guitar when I listened to mine I could hear why I did what I did I think I understand why you did it because it's quite difficult to begin with because you've just got vocal and acoustic guitars. So you're like, well, let's just create that width so it's there and there. But I kind of felt that by doing it that way and by leaving a lot of top end in that acoustic guitar, it just seems a bit disjointed a little bit. I kind of feel like the acoustic guitar sits here and the vocal sits there and it's just a bit disjointed. Um, and I, I'm going to be honest I did not like the sound of that guitar I did a lot of stuff to it I put it through tape I EQ'd a lot of it out I put um, Smart EQ on it and see like with the tape I was just kind of driving into the tape I think I even tried ceilings of did sound you? on it as well yeah I kind of roughened it up a, and then yeah, I roughened it. it up a little bit because I wanted to kind of take the edge off it and I think that's what I hear and especially in the top end strings um, and I added Soothe on it as well like I really wanted to take the, the edge off it that's the only thing I wasn't a bit sure about and then the only other thing that I was a bit like wow you've just done a Paul Third there um, was whatever effects vocal effect <laughs> you were doing I was like what the holy shit the fuck the fuck where did that come from and there's like mental delays and I was like oh no that doesn't fit as I, stylistically I just felt that I was really not right for the track and it was too loud and I was like holy shit and then I heard I listened to your video that you put on YouTube and it was at your mix portfolio and it was on my phone and I even heard it on my phone so I knew what to expect. So it's not as loud through these but on um, mobile phone that delay is quite prominent. Uh, okay, to be honest, uh, I broke my one of my phone speakers um, so I've got my phone in mono uh, so I haven't actually referenced this mix on my phone. Right. I, I'm just, I was at a point where I was trying to trust the... Uh, the PSIs, which I think it, it worked in terms of translation. I mean, how did it, how did it translate to it, headphones? Not good to me. It felt distracting and it felt like it wasn't timed or it was just too loud. Hey, do you mean the, I mean the whole mix, do you mean the, the, the delay? Yeah, just the delay. Um, I think okay. headphones wise, I don't know. The delay only really comes up in two points in the chorus when there's that like two beat gap because I wanted something to fill that and create kind of ear catch and then I actually think I needed to pull it back for the rest of it because I can hear it slightly in the background yeah I know I think it's so, it's yeah. <laughs> bit of a bit of a pull yeah because when I hear it it's like I go oh I'm like fucking holy shit like oh my god like I shouldn't hear it as loud as I heard it and it's just a bit off-putting a little bit and I'm like oh Ed wanted me to hear that there but I'm like hmm 
<laughs> like maybe it could I want a credit for my creativity yeah because there's just times where I can hear it in the background and I'm like mm, cause it's like in and out where I think a lot of mixers will have it always kind of in there so it feels like you're in like what you used to say to me about drums Try, like in this mix I tried to make it sound like the drums were all in the same room so I used the same reverb I used the uh, yeah do you know what I think you succeeded at that thank you because it actually made a, yeah. a genuine effort to do that and I used the same reverb and it was the one that you used was the UED one ah uh, there's That's Ocean it. Way I used the Ocean Way don't know if I used that on right. this one though because I might have been in Ceilings of Sound mode. right sorry uh, I might have been in Sound City right. Studio mode so for me I kind of caught that um, little trick that you use and I processed all of them with the same reverb and I did feel that yeah that um, and I don't know why it doesn't make it makes absolute sense of course you would apply the same reverb to all okay snare no I gave it they'd done the, the short snare and the, the snare plate um, but what was interesting with that was remember how we talk about sometimes you talk about kind of the low mid thing when you, sometimes you use certain reverbs I, I noticed that for the first time on this record one of them was definitely adding in this low mid energy that I actually had to EQ. So once I'd added in the verb, I had to go into the snare and take out a bit of bit of mud. Um, and I never even realised that verbs could do that. You know what I mean? You just oh, you have to pro- have to EQ reverbs, yeah, because they are, they are so influential on the overall yeah. tone of the of the of the instrument, especially with snare drums, as you found. So I still. EQ out the honky middle, you know, four five hundred hertz on a snare reverb and high pass them to one fifty, if not two hundred, if not more, depending on how much body you wanted. So yeah, yeah, you've got to you've got to be careful with reverbs because they do much like a compressor, they can really really color an mm-hmm. instrument. But yeah, I think that was again me being nitpicky because again that's <laughs> that's what we've got to do um, to help each other out. But um, again. Typical if you put minds and yours together, especially this one, because I think there's so many elements that are close. I mean, there was certain guitar parts that you have decided to, like, I'm going to put that further in the mix. There was one guitar in the chorus that I just felt was too loud. I was just like, right, okay, I get it. There it is. Well, the loud bits were post chorus, where, yeah, the bounce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bow, 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 bow. That, yeah, that, that bit. But again, that was, you know, Spike's approach of have something almost wrongly too loud mm. in the mix and give things their 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 little bit of space their little kind of mm. moment um and then for the rest of it yeah there was a reasonable amount of selectivity in terms of moving things forward and back and up mm. and down to give them their space again because that's how i felt you could get movement in the track i definitely wasn't going to be doing any auto panning yeah. on this I one agree. um there was barely any space for delays reverbs needed to be felt more than heard so yeah it, again it, it was an interesting track to mix um I, and i think we both did a so good did job I agree. uh be interesting to hear what wilf and grant say i'll let you know their yeah. feedback off air paul and on those bombshells do you want to round up the year yeah because as, as it's christmas yeah, it's, i know because obviously what day is it it's the 12th for us as we record this but when we release this it'll be very close to christmas be the 23rd yeah. probably when this comes out so happy yes, christmas happy everyone. christmas thank you for listening to the podcast we're very happy with the growth i'm just looking at um statistics because for for people who don't know youtube or don't do youtube for us to get to a thousand subscribers in what was it nine or yeah, ten videos crazy. crazy with the watch time because you don't just need a thousand subscribers to monetize it's only 500 subs it's went down to 500 subscribers three thousand watch hours and you need to have, I don't know, like so many uploads or something like that. Oh, okay. That's yeah. changed from four years, three, the watch four time's years very hard. When we, when watch time is very hard to get. It is if you're doing short mm. form content, but obviously we're doing like hour long episodes, so we could we could do that. Now, just so everyone's thinking, oh my God, more adverts, you guys are going to monetize. <laughs> we did promise in our first episode, we won't monetize. However, what we cannot guarantee is YouTube putting videos adverts in our videos anyway because i think the statistic is one in four videos that aren't monetized will have adverts put in front of them i wouldn't be surprised if that was just all videos it would make sense it's just kind of expected now that you have adverts so if you do get adverts at the moment it's not us doing that although (laughs) i'm sure you wouldn't begrudge us doing that and earning (laughs) an extra few 
a couple of pound a week <laughs> between us, um, which is pretty yeah. much what it would amount to. It's not much. So we're happy with how the podcast has grown. Thank you for liking. Uh, if you can leave reviews. But how are you feeling? How 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 have you feeling like you've developed this year? And what are you looking forward to next year? I, th- I have learned a lot this year, and you know I've with every with every mix I have learned something valuable. And the the interviews, I cannot say how how oh how God. important the interviews are. Like every we are so, so privileged. privileged to be speaking to these people. And the the funny thing is, offline you get to listen to it again. Uh, I mean, we could listen to them anyway, but. But I, I, when I'm editing, I'm always really reabsorbing what's been said. Yeah, and I think that um, I'm just getting better. You know what I mean? I'm just learning. I'm, I'm making mistakes, and I'm very, very proud of me and you that we have the balls to do what we do on YouTube because it's not easy to put your mistakes and your flaws out there. But you know, because <laughs> because people yeah, point them do, out. <laughs> but at the end of the day, me and Ed are doing this to help us and to help you watching as well. Because at the end of the day, we should be able to have a supportive network of engineers who's not here to bash, not here to make themselves look or feel better. It's all about helping each other out and it's all about being, you know, constructive. And again, there are times that, you know, you do get a little bit defensive. We're human. But I genuinely have an, a big element of proudness with me and Ed that we have managed to take our podcast to, you know, a place where we... Um, are confident enough to share our mixes, to share our approaches and to hopefully create a community of supportive people that are hopefully going to watch and listen to this and feel a little bit better in themselves that know what it is a struggle and yes you are going to make mistakes and it is okay to you know be shit and it's okay to be okay and it's okay not to be Spike Stent, it's okay not to be the people the guests that uh, we have on the podcast and stuff. Yeah. So yeah, I'm I'm just um blown away by how we've managed to get <laughs> we've managed to get through this and we're still we're still alive and we <laughs> we still have um our and we're still yeah, friends, we're still friends <laughs> uh, and we've not left YouTube in a huff because <laughs> people are oh are giving God. me a bit of a hard time on some of our mixing decisions. But we do yeah. appreciate all of your feedback. Um we don't have many that um are nasty or mean. I think we've maybe had two or three max like throughout all the episodes that we've done. So we really appreciate all your feedback. We really appreciate the support. And yeah, um, for us next year, we just plan on getting more guests and again, doing still doing mixed comparisons, but this is probably the last mixed comparison that we do in the way that we've done it today and the way we've previously done it. We want to take more of an educational approach um, I think I'm ending this year on kind of both a negative and a positive note, personally. Negative in terms of, I've been researching, um, getting into kind of actually, you know, trying to get clients. One or two people have, uh, are, 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 are asking me to do stuff, which is cool. It's not regular enough yet at all. Uh, ideally, I need like at least one mix a week and then I'm kind of, I'm in a good place. Uh, balancing that with YouTube and the podcast and drumming gigs. But it's what I'm finding is I, I've explored Fiverr in the last couple Ooh. of weeks and loads of people are on it. And I saw a guy advertising mixes for £16 wow. the other day. And, and he hell. was he lives in India. And I heard his mixes and actually it was quite good. So I thought, hmm, either that's bollocks and that's not him he's just put that up to try and get the work in which case i can kind of appreciate the entrepreneurial <laughs> tenacity and the ballsiness of doing that even though it is massively wrong um but 16 pound for him might is probably a, a day if yeah, you know maybe you even a week's good wage over there how can we, we compete can't. with that we can't. 16 quid by the time i've taken into account 16 quid doesn't even cost my day cost of running the yeah, studio which is about 25 quid by the time I break up the rent and the bills and the amount of days I'm in. 25 quid a day, plus insurance, plus tax. So that, that's kind of got me down a little bit. But on the positive side, I would totally agree with what you've said. Where we have come with our mixes from when we the produced yeah. like a pro days to now, I really feel like we're getting to a point where it's just a matter of we need experience. 100%, yeah. And this is this is where I got to with with drumming on a few occasions. I remember when I was younger, everyone just said, You're good, but you need experience. I was like, I you can't get that overnight. <laughs> and I was so impatient. 
And it's the same with photography. I got to a point, for anyone interested, Ed Thorne Photography on Instagram. I did do headshots. I got pretty good at it. But to get from that level to expert level, I just needed experience, Mm -hmm. which I couldn't be bothered getting, so I packed it in. And I feel like it's the same with mixing. And there's a little bit of me now that I'm ill, as you can probably hear at the end of the year, thinking, I just want to sign off for the year now. (laughs) Totally, just, Just relax and... My girlfriend's like, no, 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 you've got to keep pushing, keep pushing. I'm like, I've got loads to do. I need to keep the videos going. Uh, podcast will get edited. That kind of takes the priority over my own channel sometimes. Uh, and I need to keep mixing because you've just got to keep pushing forward. But I feel like I've tried and tried and tried. It's good, but it's still not a spike extent. But then I'm thinking it's not going to be because, and it never will be because by the time I've, I'm, I've done it as long as he has. He'll have done it for another 25 years. I mean, at this rate, by the time I'm 58, we'll still be doing this podcast, slagging each other's snares (laughs) off and trying to to become professional. However, just remember, right, Al Schmidt was still in his fucking 90s when he was mixing. He was mixing up until um, he died. I mean, that man was like constant. He never gave up, never, ever gave up. So um, I don't know if Serbin and (laughs) Spike and all these great guys are going to, um, keep going at it I'd imagine they keep going at it as long as they can but look there's no there's no point in sitting there going oh no we're never going to be as good you may as well reaching for the stars that's what look, me and Ed are the same that's why me and Ed got on right we've got the same um, confidence in our own abilities and at the end of the day right well I think you have confidence <laughs> I, I have confidence by kind of achievement but that's something I need to work on because once I line up infallible confidence with ability and experience it'll happen yeah and know what see the end of the, no, this is how i want to finish it i i want to have a time stamp right use this as a time stamp i want to remember this episode and hopefully in a time i'll get fucking lynched for this but i don't care the time stamp <laughs> we'll get yeah, lynched in the comments that we anyway, can look back YouTube. at this episode with a grammy in our hands doesn't matter who it is i don't give a i didn't give a shit who it is but there's nothing to say that you can't get a Grammy. Prezi did it, and Prezi was just perseverance and hard work. Graft, 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 Tora graft. Did Turo did it. Look, there's nothing to say that with enough hard work and you make the right contacts, which we have, we've got a lot of great contacts now, and we keep persevering that, look, it's not going to be two years, it's not going to be three years, it might be ten years, but know what? It's not impossible. It's in your reach if you put in the hard work, you put in the graft, you network, you work hard with your clients, you invest in yourself and that's why I want to end it for this year. So whether it's me, him or it's any of you, I would love to revert back to this episode one day and us say, you know what, we got there because it is a journey, it is a mountain to climb. Which, no, this is the question, who's going to get the Grammy first, me or you? Gun, gun held to our head, who do I think is <laughs> going to get a Grammy first? Um <sighs> I don't know, guys. Yes, leave comments. that's the way it ends up. <laughs> no, 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 don't, because that makes no, it look, a we're competition. Having a laugh, man. Fuck's like, sake. I, I think the way we need to get on is to team up and mix oh, together. Oh man, but, I know. Um, I've thought about that. Yeah, imagine, um, oh, imagine the internet would implode if Paul Third and Ed Thorne got a joint Grammy. Internet would. F- YouTube is getting fucking Grammys, and me and him are just like. On those festive bombshells, thank you for tuning in, guys. It's been emotional. Thank you to DistroKid for sponsoring this podcast for the last few months and going forward into the new year. Keep watching, keep subscribing, um, keep leaving comments, keep messaging us. We love to hear from you guys. Uh, Thank you for the support, and we will endeavour to bring you an upgraded version of the podcast in the new year. There is an episode coming on the 30th, and then we'll be carrying on from the 6th of January. So we are pushing forward. It's been emotional. Thank you.